and welcome to my art studio. Today we are going to discuss a really important topic that is going to be really beneficial if you are a beginner artist or if you put yourself in the beginner to intermediate range. A lot of artists reach out to me and say, I have such a clear vision of what I want to make in my head, but I can't seem to get that onto the canvas itself. And somewhere along the way, it gets lost. So that's what we're going to cover in this three part video series. And first of all, today, we are going to look at how to plan the painting. The reason why I've divided this subject into three different videos is I want to make sure that I'm going into enough detail to make this video worthwhile for you to watch. And also I don't want it to feel overwhelming because when we feel overwhelmed, it can really lead us into like that procrastination. And I definitely don't want that to happen. So we're going to take it really nice and simple in easy bite sized uh, lessons. And today we're going to look at planning. Now I have been definitely in this scenario where I've been so excited. I might just have like a short window of painting time and I want to make that painting time worthwhile. I just want to like get the paint on the canvas and we can get very much into that thought of like productivity and the productivity looks like me putting paint onto a canvas and then I'm painting. So sometimes we can almost like want to skip that planning part because it feels like a waste of time or it feels like we're not actually doing the painting itself. But that can be one of the first fatal mistakes to creating a piece that you really love. When we kind of like go on a journey, do we just get ready, uh, you know, get, make sure we got fuel in the car and sit in the car and be like, okay, where are we gonna go? And just like start driving with no plan in mind of where we're actually gonna go. Of course not, we usually actually start with where we are gonna go and then that is what like triggers the next events of, okay, how do we get there? Well, we need to get in the car or get on the train or however our journey looks. But ultimately the final destination is where we start and, and we kind of work backwards from there. And so when we just like sit down at a painting session with our canvas and our paints again and kind of think like, okay, so I'm gonna paint now it's almost like the other way around. We, we really want to sit down and think about what is it that I am gonna say in this painting? What is it that I want to actually make happen in this painting? Painting is almost like the method of transportation. Painting is not the final destination. The final destination is what you use the painting to say. Um, so I want to kind of just go through some of the ways that I plan a painting, um, this is not a hard and fast rule, this is just what I personally do and what I share with my students as well. And I think it's, it's nice to get a direction. So it's not about like getting a real detailed sense of exactly how a painting is gonna look, it's more about a familiarization with how you're gonna get there. So I'll dive into, this is my sketchbook that I just scribble in like no sketchbook is supposed to be a work of art in itself the whole point of a sketchbook is to make really messy scribbles notes sometimes it can look very ugly sometimes it can look beautiful it really really doesn't matter i mean for example this is some of the sketches that i made for these wisteria paintings behind me and um, i think i did yeah a couple in charcoal and then one in ink so <laughs> let this be permission for you to make very messy uh, squiggles. <laughs> it doesn't have to look like those beautiful sketchbooks that you see on Pinterest at all. And um, so when we think about planning our painting, this is really gonna be like the vet stage, like where you vet the idea. Is this gonna really work? How exactly am I gonna make it work? And a lot of times I will actually take my idea to the sketchbook and even kind of like, okay, think it's not time yet, or I'm not there yet with the idea to make it into a reality. And so sometimes this is where many ideas stay and don't actually make it to the next stage. Um, but that's a good thing because we are always gonna end up with that final result and it'll be a final result that either we're really happy with because we've put in the work to the planning stage or it'll be a final result that we're really unhappy with and it might be what we describe as a bad painting or a failed painting. So either way, it doesn't change the outcome. All this does is make sure that we've got to the outcome before we've um, wasted paint or wasted our time. So this is an example of how I would go about planning a painting. Um, so this is actually for this orchid painting behind me. I had a couple of main ideas 
about composition. So the three sort of like main things I would consider planning is the drawing, as in like the compositional elements of the drawing. So where literally do you want to place the subjects? And this really helps you see not only the subjects, but also the negative space to make sure that it feels like really balanced. This was two different composition ideas I had. So I quickly, draw, uh, quickly drew them on with some charcoal. Charcoal is really amazing. If you've got a pencil, that's fine too. But if you want to try charcoal, I would really recommend it. It has such an expressive quality and it's also really easy to change. A pencil sometimes I feel so, it's like so permanent. Even if you erase it, you can still see like the lines. Whereas charcoal, it moves around so easily. You can really like, just move things around a lot easier. So yeah, these were two different ideas. Obviously, as you can probably see behind me, I went with the second one, and which was interesting because I had this initial idea and this is why the planning stage is so rewarding because I would have initially gone with this one and maybe it had worked out, but when I tried this one, it was just like a little idea, a little experiment in my head. I thought, oh, I love that. I feel like I just like stumbled upon like a piece of treasure. So that's really nice to do. And you could do as many of these as you like. You could do four, 10. It, it doesn't matter. Just get like that creative element going and get those creative uh, ideas flowing. And this, it, when you just like doing a sketchbook page, it doesn't feel like you're wasting canvas or paint or anything like that. You can just get all your ideas down. So yeah, first of all, I would definitely get down like a compositional sketch. Then I would consider like the value. So how dark or light something is. Do you want it to feel really dark and moody? Do you want to like help it feel light and airy? And not necessarily get that down, but it does help. And when I talked about, oh, this is a good example, actually. This was a commissioned piece I worked on. And the, these were two, different i mean there were compositional sketches but mainly these were value sketches i was testing out if i wanted like a really dark background with light on top or if i wanted all the values to be fairly light and more for the center of the flowers to be those darker spots so this is a great example of how you can test out not only different composition ideas but also putting down those values and how you want the paint to represent and uh, because you cannot add color without first deciding what the value needs to be. Um, and if you're wondering what is value, value is just how light or dark something is. So maybe we could use, what could we use an example? Let's go back to that orchid sketch. So here we could see like two different pinks, this like magenta and this like baby pink. It's the same color. It's, they're both pink, basically. Um, it, I think they're exactly the same color, in fact, but <laughs> one has just had white added to it. So you could say that these are both pinks, but this one is a darker value and that is a lighter value. So when we are mixing colors and mixing paint and putting that down onto the canvas, the value, we have to decide what value do I want that color to be first? Like, do I want that to be a dark pink or a light pink? We don't wanna leave that up to chance with what we create. We wanna intentionally choose that. So when we are um, creating these little compositional drawings, it's great to decide or just experiment with different value ideas um, and see where it leads you. And then finally, as you can probably tell, there is like a color element to this as well. So once I've kind of played around with some values, I'll also play around with some colors and think about what colors I want to use and really create like a bit of a color palette. And the good reason about creating a color palette is you can decide what color mixes you like on such a small scale that you're not was wasting any paint because when you go to then uh, actually create the painting, you know exactly what colors you need. You don't need to squeeze out a bit of paint from every tube. You know, when you've decided what color mixes you like, okay, how did you make that? Then those are the only colored paints that you need. Um, and actually, I would say that the less colors you use in a painting, the more tight, the more dialed in that uh, color story is gonna be, and it's not gonna be overwhelming. It's gonna feel really harmonious with those colors. Oh, this is another one you can see. This was a commission piece I did recently, actually, and only a couple of weeks ago I finished it. This was like my compositional idea, also playing around with values and where do I want those dark moments to hit. And also um, I did like a color story with the color palette. And here I also had a little couple ideas about the style that I wanted to incorporate, this kind of like very loose floral feeling. 
If you want a breakdown of this exact painting, and um, it is actually on YouTube, I filmed a vlog containing like this whole this whole process of this painting. And so I'll pop the link to that video in the description box and you can go and watch the whole process of that painting come together. So those are just some ideas and this is really what sketchbooks are brilliant for. Um, they're not made to do these beautiful final pieces in, oh, well, to be fair, they're, they're made for anything you want it to be. Um, but what I'm saying is it doesn't have to be that. It can be a place to get ideas down. And I remember when I first started my artistic journey, I was desperate to be able to use a sketchbook and I wanted that like messy notes kind of feel and just chucking everything in there. And I didn't know where to start. I thought, okay, I want to plan. I want to put ideas in there, but I don't know what to actually put in there, <laughs> like in a very physical sense, like, what do I make notes of? You know, how do I put down my ideas? I wasn't quite sure how to do that. So uh, what I'm really excited to have done is, is created uh, like a PDF little worksheet workbook that's really gonna help you plan through your next painting. It's completely free. Um, I will add a link to where well, you can download it from my website. And um, so you just pop your email in and I'll email it directly to you. And uh, it's gonna just really help you have like a plan for your painting. Um, well, in a way, it's kind of a plan to be able to plan your painting. Lots of planning going on, but it's, it's really just going to have a little cues, little ideas to really get your inspiration going so that you know where to start. Because sometimes that's all we need, isn't it? It's just like a little, little pointer, a little nudge of like start here and then the ball can get rolling. So I'm really excited to have included that um, in this video and I hope that it really gives you um, just that little bit of inspiration and most of all, please honour every part of your art journey. When I think back, I was so mad at myself, so angry, so impatient with myself of all those moments where things didn't go right. But now I look back, I'm so thankful to those moments because those are the moments that like teach you the most you need to know. So please honor every part of your artistic journey, whether you're right at the start and you've never picked up a paintbrush before, um, whether you feel like you've been painting a while but you can't quite get that improvement that you want to see and start making the artwork that you want to and know that you can. Um, or whether you're a seasoned artist and you just think maybe I need to like just get back into the sketchbook a little bit more uh, just to put down some ideas. It doesn't matter where you are on your journey. We're all, we're all in different places, but we're all on the same road. And I just want a little reminder, please don't feel discouraged. Wherever you are in your journey is completely um, special and mesmerizing and you are making art. And that is always better than being too discouraged to not make art. <laughs> so um, please let me know in the comments how you find the workbook and um, have a glance through it. Hopefully it will be uh, really helpful and let me know how, how you get on. Also, uh, let me know your biggest challenge that you feel uh, in creating a painting. And don't forget uh, to look out for part two where we are gonna be looking at how to improve the skills so that you can then put that vision and idea onto the canvas. Okay, see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.